Hello everyone, my name is Bethany Swartz Krautheim, and in this video we are going to talk about the grading aspects of Google Forms in terms of free response questions. So with Google Forms is great with multiple choice, it's great with matching, um, it's even great with short answer or short text things when it's just a number being typed in, but with equations and words where they actually have to type in um, more than just a simple word or phrase, this comes in handy knowing how to do these things. So I'm going to take you through the math quiz that you guys took at the beginning of my presentation. Um, at this point in time of making the video, I have very little data. Um, I will be more than welcome to show you more if you would like to see it, but this gives you just a quick synopsis of what you need to do. All right, so this is what the quiz looks like on the teacher's end. Um, so I went through, you've got your name, your date, the different schools and the subjects that you teach. For my students, I generally do name, date, and class period. And then this is the quiz itself. So I wanted to show you what this looks like. Um, I'm going to change that back to this because this is mainly what it looks like. When you look at this, okay, the question comes up like this. I typed in this. I used Equatio, which is fabulous to use. I highly recommend um, to type in my little equation right here that's not wanting to show. There it is. Okay, so he looks like this. Now, when your students type it in, I would hope that your students use Equatio as well to type in their answers to make it really nice. However, if you are not wanting your students to use Equatio, you can have them type in their answers just as typing them in. So you've got Y equals 5 minus. Now, this is the part where it gets a little tricky. Some people like to put parentheses around it. Some people just type it in like this. The reason why I type it in like this is because most of my students do, because when they write fractions, they write it as a number over another one they don't generally write it side by side like this um, so that's how most kids would type it in if they were to type it in um, so that's the way I type it in I mainly type it in like this just to help myself out I'll show you why in just a minute same thing with this one they could totally use equatio if not they could have typed it in like this so that's why I type it in here this one is multiple choice I went through um, and I clicked which ones were the correct answers in order for it to pull up. And then this one right here, this is one of those easy short response. They don't have to use Equatio. They can literally just hit the number and be done. So that's that. All right, so let's actually look at people who have already submitted theirs because that's the important part. So when you click responses up at the top, it brings you up to summary. Now this is awesome, this insights piece right here. I love looking at this when I've only been doing one standard within this test. Now this one, I broke up into um, four standards. Um, so because of that, um, it makes it a little bit difficult for looking at this because it's not really showing me each of the four, it's showing me just one of them. Um, so this is not as great when you're making sure that you're doing standards-based grading, um, but it is really helpful if you're just quizzing or assessing on one standard. This frequently missed questions, I love looking at this one as well because it shows me pinpoint really quick which ones, um, which questions the students missed. So for the solve the following expressions for why, that was the first question. As of right now, it shows that nobody got it right. And the reason being is because we haven't actually checked it yet. Let me, we'll talk about that in just a second. Same thing for the intersection point. It says that only one out of the three people got it. But again, that's because we haven't actually checked it yet. Both of those were free response questions. So I'm gonna show you how to check those. You can also see their name, the date. You can see everything that people put in. What school did they come from? It shows me a brief synopsis of that. It shows me what classes everybody teaches or whatever your question is. This is always great for looking at for your averages, especially with multiple choice tests. It'll show you what percentage here of each student picked it. Um, this one's kind of cool because you just slide to the next one, which I think is awesome. Um, so there's that. But let's talk about grading the um, free response questions. Now, what most people's instinct is is that they come to the original or their individual one. This is me, okay? I went through and I took this test. Um, apparently, I missed a point. I don't know how I missed a point. We'll figure it out together. Um, so anyways, this is my name, the date, all that stuff. I did not go through and do that. So if you wanted to do it the individual route. Now notice, I typed in my answer using Equatio. So with using Equatio, I need to check if my answer is the same thing as the answers that are correct right here. Now this is why it was important that I typed the answers in on the question screen because of the fact that now I can look at this and look at these answers at the same time. 
Now, I can already tell that some of you are totally turned off by having to go through each individual student because when we have as many students as we do, this is not what we want to do. So the best way to do this is we are going to go to question. Question breaks it down. It takes every single person's, I guess I'll start from the beginning. It takes every single person who took this test and it lists it out for us. So I can see John's, I can see mine, and I can see Java's. So now obviously you're not going to grade name, date, school, subject, taught. Those are things that we don't grade. Um, but this one, this is something we do grade. Now, what I want you to notice is that this guy right here, y equals 5 minus 2 over 3x, it says there's two ungraded responses. It, it sh that means that there are two people that typed in this exact same thing. So two people using Equatio, because that's what this is from, used Equatio to get this answer, and this is the answer they got. The, another person, they apparently had no idea what they were doing, so they just typed in some numbers. Okay. Now, these two people, if I click the check mark, they will automatically get points for that question. This person right here did not get it right. Now, I have two options, either option one, I can leave it like this because he's currently not getting credit for it, or option two, I can click the X. Most of the time, I do click the X because that tells me in my brain, I have seen this answer, this answer is wrong, but that's totally a preference thing. Once you do that, you're going to click save and it takes that, it takes whatever you do on this page and it automatically sends it to the individual. So we're going to come back here. Now, here's me again. Remember how I said that I was missing a point? I'm no longer missing that point because I did it here on the question. So that also means that whoever was the other response that got this question, they also received that point because I said to. So let's go and let's look at this one as well. So this one was typed in multiple ways. So this guy right here, I'm going to click this guy right here. It says view answer key or hide answer key. So this was the question that it was. This was the graph right here. And this was that answer that I typed in so that I could see it um, on my end. So it's one and negative two. This person here typed it in, like actually using the keypad, didn't use Equatio, typed it in. Notice it automatically awards them the 10 points. And the reason why it does that is because I said it was the correct answer. And since they typed it in the exact same way I did, it automatically awards them credit. This person, on the other hand, used Equatio to type in theirs. Their answer is completely right. It is not wrong, but the computer cannot register that um, because, unfortunately, Google Maps has not allowed Equatio to be used as an answer yet, um, but I promise it is probably coming. Um, so because of that, I have this here. I know it's right, so I'm going to click the plus sign or the check mark right here so that they get the credit. Again, this person had no idea what they were doing, so they're going to click the X there to tell myself, hey, I've seen this, and I'm going to click Save. When I click Save, remember that individual, it goes straight out to them. So I already had this score already, so I'm assuming that it was Parsons that typed in the extra one, or it was Java. And the way that you could tell, I can go through here. Let's look at Java's, actually. So here's Java's. We're going to scroll down. This question, it's got zero points. He was the person I assigned zero to. This question, zero points. He was the person I assigned zero to. Now, when your students do this, when you go into the question section on the student's end, when you click response, it says response one here and response two, or response for us here and response three here, I think. Um, but for your students, what's awesome is that when they submit it, it comes up with their student ID number. It automatically does it. So in that case, if you're seeing like there's like five people that all have the same wrong answer, we all know what that means. I mean, we hope that we don't know what that means, but we generally do. You could easily write down all of their student ID numbers, look them up, and then you can decide from there what needs to be done. Um, so then let's move on to the next question. So the next question is this one. This is all multiple choice. There is no need for you to go through and change any answers unless you wanted to award partial credit for certain answers. Um, so that's this one right here. Um, you've got four. You click these ones. I like these because you like click them. So if we're talking about just the first answer, all three of the people that took this got the first answer right. We click the second one, all three of us got that one right. And the last one, all three of us got that one right as well. And because of the fact that this was multiple choice and I said that those were the correct answers, it has already awarded them credit. All right, and last but not least is this question. Now this question right here, if I click view answer key, it's got the question. I typed in the number eight. Eight is the correct answer. So that is all they have to type in. If they wanted to use Equatio, they could. And remember, you would just grade it the exact same way. All right, that is all I have for you. If you ever have any questions, please feel free to contact me at any time.